I am suffering from a character crisis in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Ever since Smash came out, I've mainly only played one character, but with how large Smash's cast is, could I be missing out on someone? I want to give every character a chance at becoming my main. This week, I discover for myself how Roy and his Echo Krom differ, and why Krom isn't as bad as everyone makes him out to be. This is a series on my blog and this YouTube channel, so like the video and subscribe if you'd like to join me as I go through my character crisis. Roy, a character who debuted in Super Smash Bros. Melee before he even had a game to himself, was gifted with an Echo Fighter in Krom, the father of Lucina and great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather of Marth. Roy and Krom only have two things that set them apart the way their swords work, and their up specials. Roy has a unique property with his sword, which makes it deal more damage closer to the hilt and less at the tip. Krom has more of a club than a sword, since it works the same from tip to hilt. Krom's up special has great vertical distance at the cost of horizontal range, whereas Roy can mix up how he recovers, but covers less distance overall. These are the only things that set these characters apart, yet their relationship regarding the tier list has shifted significantly throughout Ultimate's history. At the beginning of Ultimate, many players identified Krom as one of the best in the game. His ability to swing his sword with little to no regard for his opponent was oppressive. With no sour spots to ruin his game plan, Krom was at first considered to be a much stronger character than Roy. However, over time, the community's opinion of Krom shifted. His up special is great for securing cheesy kills, but as players got better at the game, people realized his up special was much easier to gimp compared to Roy. With the rise of Roy mains such as Cola and a comparable lack of results for Krom players, his position on the tier list began to fall. With the latest official tier list, Roy sits in S tier while Krom languishes in B tier. Public opinion on Krom has shifted so much that the most notable Krom player, Mr. R, gets clowned on anytime he picks the character. With only two things separating them, it's surprising to see such a vast difference between the perceived strengths of Roy and Krom. Before trying out these characters for myself, I agreed with the public opinion, and had Roy in top tier and Krom in high tier. However, after dedicating a month to play both of these characters, I'm no longer sure Krom deserves the hate he gets. Regardless of who you are playing as, the first thing any aspiring Croy player should learn is jab into back air. To perform this technique, it is necessary to learn how to reverse aerial rush. Start by dashing forward in one direction. Click the stick in the other direction to initiate the sliding animation, and then input a jump. If done correctly, your character will be facing backwards while still maintaining forward momentum. This technique can be done very quickly, which is what makes jab into back air possible. Roy and Krom's back air kills very early, and jab is a fast move, which can be used in neutral or ledge trapping, making this one of their best kill confirms. Another important thing to learn is how to tech chase. Krom and Roy have many great moves that send the opponent into a tech chase situation, such as down tilt and forward throw. When you hit an opponent with one of these moves, they'll be sent at an angle that will have them hitting the ground in a tumble state. Either they miss the tech, and you can punish them, or they can tech, which gives them only three options to choose from. By sending an opponent into a tech chase situation repeatedly, you can learn their habits which will set you up for an even greater punish once you figure them out. When playing as Roy or Krom, the main thing you need to take advantage of is your speed. With some of the fastest ground and air speed physics in the game, playing these characters correctly means never giving your opponent space to breathe. I discovered that I was playing at my best whenever I could track my opponent's movement. By relentlessly chasing them down whenever they were in disadvantage, I could use my powerful disjoints to take their stocks extremely early. Despite their differences, both of these characters struggle making it back to the stage. Roy's main advantage over Krom is that his recovery has more mix-up potential, which complicates edgeguarding him. That isn't to say Krom is lacking in mix-ups. There are multiple different heights Krom can recover at, some of which can even avoid getting hit by a counter. Just be aware that Krom has no hitbox above his recovery, which can lead to you getting spiked. Thanks to their amazing airspeed, it's important to remember that air dodging to the ledge is another viable option for both of them. Getting knocked off stage is scary for either Roy or Krom, but as long as you have control of center stage, you can easily destroy your opponent's stocks. I hope you enjoy the combos I was able to land while playing as these characters.
This is my first time having to deal with Echo Fighters in this series. I decided the best way to handle it was by attending two separate tournaments, to get a feel for each character as an individual. Since there's going to be two tournament reports instead of one, I'll try to keep it quick, unless I have something to say about it. If you like the way I handled this, or think I should have done it differently, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about this. The first character I started with was Krom, since I felt that it would be easier to learn his moveset without having to worry as much about spacing. My round one paired me against Scrape, a me brawler player who I've never played against. I found Krom's up B out of shield to be very useful in this matchup. Combine that with some timely edge guards and forward smashes, and it was a quick 2-0 in my favor. My next opponent goes by, uh... Oni-chan, oh wow! I'm going to kill myself. Forget that, I'm just going to call him Speedy Blue Dude like everyone else. Speedy is a strong opponent, and I have struggled playing against him, especially since Min Min got added to the game. I won game one against his Aegis pretty convincingly, which led to him counterpicking with Min Min. At first, things are dead even, but I make one bad decision after another in disadvantage, and before I know it, I've lost the stock in the game. Game 3, I counterpicked a final destination, and he switches back to Aegis. I knew that this was my chance to finally beat him, given how badly I beat his Aegis in Game 1. However, after I let that thought get into my head, it began to affect how I played. I has would twice due to nerves and bad spacing. Despite giving him two stocks for free, I was still demolishing him and brought it to last hit last stock. However, he read my panic option, and before I knew it, I lost the set. I'm not going to lie, I was pissed I lost this set, and definitely had a gamer rage moment. I wanted to win so badly it got in the way of me playing the game. This anger definitely carried through to my next set, and I'm sorry Anomaly, but it was not a good time to face me in bracket. I eviscerated their Robin, and although it was closer with Kazuya, I still took it 2 out. Then I had to fight Ile again, the Sonic player who knocked my Incineroar into Luda's bracket last week. Game 1 was close, but Ile clutched and was able to take it. However, in game two, he smoked me, thanks to some well-spaced springs and edge guards. Thus ends my run with Krom at 2-2. Not bad. The next time I showed up at my local, I had changed my ways and had become a Roy main. However, despite my change of character, I was still a masher at heart. First up was against Mr. Gamer24, a friend of mine who hadn't entered a tournament in a while. Typically, he beats me whenever we play, but his rest was showing and I was able to take it 2-0. I'm looking forward to facing him again once he's had more time to get back into the group of things. Then I had to fight Valor, the third best player in the state, and also the third Sonic who I've had to fight in a tournament in a row. Please end my suffering. Game 1, I got 3 stocked, and it looked like I barely knew how to play the game. For Game 2, I vowed to not let that happen again. I took a deep breath, focused on my opponent, and began to play. At first, it was looking like a repeat of Game 1 would happen again, but I kept my cool, brought it back to even, and then got a huge kill with a sweet spot's forward smash. I then maintained the lead, and had about 100% on his last stock as I got off the angel platform. But by now my focus had slipped. I knew I was playing against one of the best in the state, and I was so close to taking a game off of him. My hands were shaky, and all it took was for him to win one neutral interaction for me to lose the set. I lost my composure, and it cost me the game. But I'm happy with the changes I made, and for bringing it that close in the first place. Up next was iCarly.com a Diddy Kong player who's honestly just fun to be around. I feel pretty comfortable in this matchup in general, and thanks to the skills I gained using items as a Link player, I was able to take the set pretty convincingly. Finally, I got to go up against Spark, a Terry player who hits me with combos that infuriate me as much as they inspire me. Game 1 was going well until he got go, and I honestly just panicked and let him take my last stock for free. In Game 2, I was controlling the pace of the game and was on track to win, until he hit me with back throw into down air at 11%. I was definitely more infuriated than inspired by this particular combo, but at least I have something to look forward to when it's my turn to play Terry. Okay. Final results. Playing both Roy and Krom made me realize that I had a lot of preconceived notions about these characters who I hadn't even really played as before. I was under the assumption that because Krom's recovery is worse, it wasn't worth investing the time playing as him, especially when Roy exists. But after experiencing both of these characters, I learned that it is much more nuanced than the Smashers make it out to seem. I'm no longer convinced that Roy is strictly better than Krom. I was expecting Roy to feel like a better character than Krom, given that he's a whole two tiers higher than him. But when I switched over, there were many things I missed about Krom, despite playing the better character in Roy. 
His up the out of shield has more range than Roy, and not having to worry about sour spots made my on stage game much more consistent. Roy of course has things that are better than Chrome, such as a more consistent recovery, and double edged dance is honestly just a war crime. I now perceive the Roy slash Krom argument differently, and who you play is more of a matter of what kind of consistency you prefer, whether that's on stage dominance or having options to recover off stage. I'm happy that my opinions on these characters changed so much, because I learned that I actually really enjoy Krom. Going into this, I expected Roy to be the clear favorite, but spacing a tipper F smash as Krom hit differently, so to speak. Regarding my tournament experience, I also learned that I have a problem with choking. It's easy for me to get in my own head and lose my focus. Going forward, I'm going to try to work on my inner game just as much as my skills in Smash. But my character crisis isn't over yet, which means that it's time for a new character. Comment below for a character you'd like to see added to the next poll. I suppose it's time I finally learned how to play Duck Hunt Duo. See you on Tuesday.